Hi guys, I would like to show you this Python module that I have created some time ago and now I'm maintaining it to support latest versions of Python. It's called py.net. You install it with pip install.net. That's it. pip install.net. That's your package. The most recent version of py.net is 151 and it now supports Python 3.12 64-bit and Python 3.10 64-bit. Yes. It is Python 3.12 for Windows, the native Python, 64-bit version for AMD 64. Let me show you the py.net module. We import it by saying import.net. There is a submodule, .NET Seamless, which allows seamless integration with this interactive shell. It's specifically designed to use it in interactive shell so that certain features are enabled by default and certain names are exported into global namespace. So for example, generic method support is on, extension method support is on, and the assembly search path is set to use default, meaning that you have access to all the default .NET assemblies that are shipped with your framework. In production code, you shouldn't be using seamless because it's uh, putting things into global namespace that you probably don't want. And it also um, installs things that you may not need. For example, generic method or extension method. If your code does not use those, you don't need to install them. And because of that, it is sufficient to just import .NET. All right, let me then load some assembly. How do we load assembly in a py.net? As we can see here in this quick start, we can load assembly by doing .NET load assemblies. Let me just copy paste this line. It worked. If you want to see what assemblies are loaded, you can do that by calling help on the CLR submodule of .NET. It lists all the available namespaces. And after that, it lists all available assemblies. We can see that there is a namespace link loaded here. We can now import this namespace. By importing this namespace, we included extensions method such as where and select. Let's first try to demonstrate the basics. Let's say we have numbers which are list of int 32. We can create it like this. And we can call add method on this. And we can do for value in numbers print value. So we can see that iterators from .NET integrate seamlessly into Python. Python is using them as normal iterators. But we can also initialize list in a different way. We can create a list from Python list 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is our list now. And we can also do numbers enter in interactive shell, which we'll call rep. If you do rep on the numbers, this is exactly the string you're getting. If you do str on numbers, it will be a different string. This is a string produced by two string, which is a method of the object in .NET. And this is what the value of two string would be. And this is what you would get when you do print on numbers. Okay, so if you want Pythonic version of numbers, you can print rep. Here you go. All right, can you do a list of lists? Of course you can. 4, 5, 6, that's a list of lists. However, if I want to make it .NET list, I need to say what is the type. It's a type of list of int32. And I want to construct it, so I put round brackets. So I am constructing a list of lists of ints from Python list of lists. Worked. What is lol? It also shows you a wrap, which is a list of lists. Can I create a dictionary of dictionaries? 
So in Python, dictionary is like this. Let's say the string key and then dictionary, and that's a dictionary of dictionaries. Can I put that into a dictionary of dictionaries in .NET? Let's say I put another string key, and it's going to be dictionary of dictionaries of ints. Let's do that. It's a dictionary of dictionary of int32. Now, the key is a string. In the other dictionary, the key is also a string. If I haven't made a mistake, it should work. And indeed, it is dictionary of dictionaries, and it also represents itself as Python dictionary of dictionaries when you ask rep. So it's pretty cool. We have conversion from Python into .NET, but we also have conversion from .NET into Python. Let me demonstrate. So we have these numbers, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can call help numbers. As in Python, every object or class has help, so .NET objects also have help. We can see here, for example, a method called find all, which takes a predicate. Now I'm going to show you something fancy. A predicate is a function. Function has a lot of problems because function needs to have types in the signature. But we solved this problem. I would like to find all numbers using lambda, saying all x's such as x divides by 2. You can see that find all have worked with Python lambda. Find all is a .NET method which is expecting .NET function, but I'm passing Python function into it. I'm passing a Python function which magically turns into .NET function. So the flow goes from Python, which we are here right now in Python, into .NET object numbers, which is a list of int, into a method find all in that object, which is in .NET. Inside .NET, the find all will call back into the predicate, which is in Python, so it calls back to this lambda for every element. All right, so I showed you the basics. Now let me show you the extension methods. So numbers will have a method, for example, where, and it's an extension method proxy. It is an extension method. All right, let's try the where method. So I need to call where on numbers. Now, I need to pass some type parameter here, but I know that my element of my numbers is int32. So I say int32. And, well, let's, let's see what the help will say for this. Maybe this is correct. Now it says that where takes the i enumerable of int32, a predicate is a font taking an int32, returning a boolean, and the result is i enumerable of int32. Makes sense. We're filtering the numbers which are int32s using a predicate. So now let's write the predicate. I'm using the same predicate as last time, so we should get the same numbers. All right, so we got an iterator. We can use list comprehension to see what the numbers are. I'm going to say x for x in numbers where x modulo 2 equals 0. Look at that. We have same result as we did when we asked for find all. It's just now we're using extension method where. Okay, what else can we do with this result? We can create a list of int32 directly from this where. This way, we will not be jumping to Python back. So the, the Python will only say, I want to call a constructor of list of ints, and I want to pass into this constructor a result of calling where on numbers. So the only Python operations is to manage the objects that are .NET objects, but it will not do conversions. So we're going to say even numbers. Now let's see what even numbers are. They are indeed 6 and 8. All right, so that's very interesting, isn't it? Because we're having a lot of going on here. We have extension methods, we have generics, and we have 
predicates, right? Let's, let's try the select. Let's try the select. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to change where into select. Let me show you the help for select. Select takes i enumerable of some type. It takes a function and then returns i enumerable of some type. But we know that select takes i enumerable of first type and returns a, an i enumerable of the second type. And the function is a map between first type and the second type. So we can just say select. And the first type we know is an int 32. And the second type, well, let's make it a single. Let's see what the help for that will be like. You can see that I'm actually calling help for specializations. Now I specialize this extension method and I got an instance of a method. This method is now from i enumerable in 32 with selectors that is a font from in 32 to single. And the whole thing returns i enumerable of single. All right, let's try the select now from in 32 to single. I'm going to produce some numbers and it will be the expression x times x times 0 0.5, so half of squares. Voila! I produced a list of some numbers. And it's a .NET list. You can see it's a .NET list of single. All right, let's look under the bonnet of this monster because it feels like this is a big monster. It has a lot of weird stuff going on under the bonnet. I can tell you that this is Boost Python, C++, C++ CLR, right? All them mixed together into one project. It's native Python and managed .NET classes connected together to this layer of glue, which is half native half managed glue. It's like very interesting glue layer. Let me show you. All right, so this is the project, pi.net. It has source and include folders. This is the C++ part. And it has .NET folder, which is Python sources. For example, an implementation of generic methods and extension methods is done fully in Python. You can see that, for example, generic method is a complicated code that does a lot of lookups using the reflection that is exposed from C++ layer. For example, this is a property that comes from reflection, but we have access to it in Python because it's exposed by C++ layer. This is object handle. This is root class that stores GC root of .NET object. GC root is a special thing that allows you to put handle to a managed object into native class. This special syntax here allows you to connect together .NET object, the managed .NET object, with native code, native class. This class here, this .object handle, this is a native object. And this is like a smart pointer to GC collected object system object. You can see that object handle is exporting via boost Python into Python the, the special properties such as str, rep, enter, exit, also operators. Dynamic object handle is a class on top of object handle. Dynamic object handle uses reflection in order to access properties of an object. It has get properties, get property, set property, it also has set get add hook and get get add hook. These extra two methods set this internal get add hook, which is Python objects kept by boost Python object handle. And this allows us to call into Python when property is requested. So if Python code is requesting attribute of a object that comes from .NET, then this hook allows me to hook into Python so that there is some Python code that actually uh, responds to this get attribute. This way, this .NET object, which is represented by this dynamic object handle, will have properties of the original .NET object plus all the attributes that were injected by Python code. This allows me to provide extension methods. Dynamic type handle is a special object handle. It's a handle to a type, a .NET type. A type 
is a reflection information of the .NET type. So it gives me at runtime all the information about the type in .NET. It allows me to do generics, to do constructors, to call methods, to set properties, and so on. This get specialized type is a special function which works for generic types, which produces an actual type from a generic type. Dynamic type converter choice. What is this? It applies a function at compile time. A function is represented as a second order template. It's called user action. And you can see here that depending on the runtime parameter type, this parameter here, type, we choose one of the branches of this if else statement. So for example, if the type that we know at runtime happens to be system u in 16, which is a .NET type, then we apply user action to manage type conversion info, which is specialized with system u in 16 and native u in 16 that I defined in another header. So this manage type conversion info has methods of converting one to the other. And when I'm applying user action, I'm applying some action to convert using this information. So this information is a compile time parameter for my user action, which is compile time function. And then apply is a runtime function. So this is actually creating a monad because user action is a compile time function taking compile time parameter, which results in some function, apply in this case, and then at runtime, the function as a whole, the apply, takes a runtime parameter args, which is action args. The type conversion header defines number of different conversions. It defines this from manage type converter template class and to manage type converter template class. These are then specialized for those four types and then later on for other types. And also there is number of other template classes here defined to do conversions. We have a method convert to managed. This specific method is very interesting. The role of this function is to turn Python value into .NET value. This argument here tells us what is the .NET type that the resulting object should be of. So we are interested in the lambdas, how the lambdas get converted into .NET uh, functions. See, there is a branch in this function which checks if the result type, the one that we expect, is supposed to be a delegate. Delegate is a way of saying it's a function. In .NET, a delegate represents a function. We can see number of branches here. It can be an action. It can be a font. And otherwise, it's an arbitrary, arbitrary delegate. So our Lambda was taking one argument and returning a value. It will be this branch here, building fonts proxy. So this is fonts proxy. It has number of invoke methods with different number of parameters. It does conversion from the .NET parameters into boost Python objects that are then exposed to Python. You can see this convert to Python. This is the conversion that's happening here from .NET object into boost Python object. And then this boost Python object is passed into Python function as a parameter. This is one argument function. This is two argument function. This is three argument function. And every argument needs to be converted. So one of these functions, one of these invoke functions is selected based on what is the number of parameters that the .NET function should have. And then we specialize those parameters. And we can see that this function invoke is a generic function, which takes the number of generic type parameters. All we need to do is just specialize those parameters and voila, we will have a function that matches the required type. So here's what we do. In the fonts proxy, we're listing all the methods. We're skipping all the methods that are not called invoke. At this stage, we're only looking at the invoke. If the number of arguments of the invoke is different, we go to the next one. At this stage, we found an invoke with the matching number of parameters. Now we need to specialize generic type parameters using this reflection call. This method info here is a new method info produced by specialization. Now we need to create an object funds proxy because funds proxy contains some fields, some data members, and they need to be carried over as well. So it's not only the method, but also the data needs to go in. We're creating a closure. 
And here, system delegate create delegate, this is where we create a closure, a closure containing this funds proxy and the method. And that, as a result, is a packaged into .NET function from Python, which allows you to call find all with predicate in Python. So this is py.net 151 for the latest version of Python 3.12. I hope you'll find it useful for your projects, whether it's a toy project or some production projects. This library is very stable. Um, it's been around for a while. I do not need to maintain anything with this library because uh, the APIs don't really change. And uh, I just keep building new versions for new Pythons. <laughs> so right now we have 3.12. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe, like, leave comments if you have any. Thank you.